Good evening, good evening, good evening, Ebenezer AME Church family. God bless you this evening. It is so, I'm so excited to be with you on this Wednesday night Bible study once again. It has been a little while since I've sat in this chair and had an opportunity to share with you. And I tell you, I have missed the opportunity to be before you in this capacity. But nevertheless, it's been a, a blessing since uh, this entire year as we've been going forward. And I just cannot believe we are already in the month of May having just celebrated Mother's Day on last Sunday, and now we're looking forward to Pentecost Sunday and the week and the Sunday to come. And I'll just tell you, it is exciting to just be in this season where we are right now. Before we open up uh, Bible study, there's just a few uh, housekeeping things that we want to do. We just want to remind everyone to come on out to Sunday morning for Pentecost Sunday. This, this Sunday It's going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. So again, I just want to also just thank our pastors for once again just trusting me with the opportunity to sit here and to, to speak to you all on this evening. I just want to thank Reverend Dr. Granger Browning, Reverend Dr. Joanne Browning, our pastors, as well as all the great officers and you, the members of this great church, for tuning in. So right now, we're gonna, I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer, but before that, I do want to tell you, uh, call your friends, tell your friends, text your friends, share the link. Uh, uh, share the gospel, as they say. Let them know that Bible study has begun. It started, and we're going to get into it tonight. We're going to talk about a subject tonight that I really hope will put a smile on your face and hope to encourage you, especially in the middle of this great season that we're in. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we open up. But if you would, why don't you just um, go with me to the Lord right now in a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come this evening, God, just giving you praise, honor, and glory for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and just for who you are. God, as we have an opportunity to read through and scrub through this ancient text, we pray, oh God, that you will illumine some things in the text that will be able to, we will be able to apply it to our current modern day life, oh God. God, we thank you for continuing to speak to us. We thank you for continuing to rest upon us. We thank you for continuing to dwell amongst us. We, can, we thank you for continuing to work things out for our good, oh God. We thank you for being a God who hears our prayers and answers our prayers. We thank you, God, for just being all-consuming, all-knowing, and just available to us at our every call. So right now, God, as we move forward into this uh, lesson tonight, we just ask that you would give us something fresh, give us something new. Allow uh, the, the, your thoughts, your thoughts to come through my words, O oh God, and so that your people will be blessed. We give you praise, honor, and glory on this day. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ that we pray. Amen. He's worthy to be praised.
praise the Lord, church. We are back. We are back. We are so excited, again, like we said, to be able to come before you on this evening. Uh, thank you. I pray that you haven't turned away, or, or in fact, you may have set, called some of your friends and let them know that Bible study has begun, and Reverend Taylor is here with you, and I just, I'm so excited about what we can talk about tonight. And I just really have a simple question. It's a simple question I want to put out to you, to the group. Please put it in the chat. You can answer it any way you want to. But the simply, our title for tonight is a simple question. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be happy? Amen. I, I love this time of year, not just because it's springtime, not just because the weather is warmer and the flowers are blooming and all those different things. But one of the things that I'm really finding exciting right now this time of year is when I go on the social media and I see all the prom pictures. Has, have you all been seen all the prom pictures and all the young people going to their senior prom or junior prom and senior prom? They're all dressed up. They're looking phenomenal. They look happy. They look excited. What also excites me about this time of year, like within this last week and the next couple of weeks, all the graduation pictures, all the posts of everyone who's graduating from school, college, um, uh, advanced degrees, etc. And, and it's just a blessing to just see all the joy that have come as a result of so many people's long, hard work. In fact, my own beloved Howard University School of Divinity gave, uh, issued a doctorate degree to its oldest member at 83 years old, a woman received her doctorate at 83 years old. So for any of my seniors or jewels or seasoned saints that's watching this tonight, 83 years old, she received her doctorate. And she did the work. She went through. She sat in class and wrote all the papers. And it's just a blessing to be encouraged by some of the various things that we're seeing. Um, um, what I like about it is that this season is kind of like a winning season for so many. We're seeing the wins that, that God is allowing people to enjoy the fruits of their hard labor. But before that, the, the win, the victory, we know they went through some hard times. We know we, they went through a lot of challenges. I'm going to lift up a text to you today. Uh, we're going to look at about four or five texts, but one of them in particular, our theme scripture, is going to come from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But before I go to that, I just want to uh, uh, give you a little precursor to that. See, Ecclesiastes is, is written, uh, is, is accredited to being written by Solomon. Solomon was what, David's son who, who ascended to the same throne that David ru ruled over. And in 2 Chronicles, and this is not going to be on the screen, but in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, the Lord comes to Solomon and asks Solomon, now that I've made you king, what can I do for you? What can I give you? What, what, you can ask me anything. And, and that night, it says, that night the Lord appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask whatever you want me to give you. And then here's what Solomon said. Solomon answered God, you have shown great kindness to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed for you have made me king over the people. This is what he asked for. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I might lead these people for whom, for who is able to govern this great people of yours. In other words, give me wisdom and knowledge. And the Lord said, because you didn't ask for riches, because you didn't ask for fame, because you didn't ask for long life, because you didn't ask for the elimination of your enemies, I'm going to grant you just that, in fact, on a more abundant level. So as we move over to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, you have heard the first few verses of this. Uh, um, it's really kind of a poem. Uh, the best way to read this uh, text in the first eight verses is to kind of read it as a poem, and you can see the contrast. And what, what Solomon is doing here, he's contrasting, um, let's just say, light and darkness, okay? He's contrasting good and bad, bad and evil, uh, uh, yeah, good and evil, and just, you know, the, the polar opposites of the spectrum for the first eight verses. But we're going to read verse... Um, Three, uh, chapter 3, we're going to actually go through uh, all the way to verse 15. And, and we want to talk about this. We want to set this up a little bit because the first few verses, I just want to read for you because it's familiar to you. But the meat of it is going to come when we get to chapter nine, verse 9. All right? So again, do you want to be happy? Keep that in mind. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. There is a time for everything. And a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. 
a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I'm going to stop right there, that's verse 8. And just remember, we're here to talk about happiness. Happiness, happiness, happiness. And we all understand what happiness is. It, it comes from an overflow of our heart of joy, of adulation, of, of pride. And of the overall, it just makes it, when we feel good, we tend to be happy. And so we want to look at this just a little bit longer. And as we go to verse 9, I want to really pull some things out to you. And I, and I, and I dare say, many of you probably haven't heard this uh, as we go further into this. Then it says, verse 9, what do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden of God. I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toll. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and taken away from it. God does it so that all people will fear him. And you know we've studied this many times when it says to fear God, we're not talking about trembling, we're talking about reverence and awe, love, admiration, honor. Whatever has already been and what will be has been before and God will call the past to account. I just want to pull our attention back again to verse 12. I know there's nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toll, as this is the gift of God. So Solomon's point in this text is that God has a plan for all people. Thus he provides the cycles of life, those first uh, eight verses, it was a cycle of life, the good, the bad, the time to plant, the time to tear, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the cycles of life, basically each, each with its own work for us to do. So in each cycle of life that we find ourselves in right now, you may not be a graduate right now. You may still be in the cycle of life where you're in your study, okay? So it would say a time to study, a time to celebrate, a time to graduate. So you may still be in your time for study. Although we may face many problems that seem to contradict God's plan, these should not be barriers for us believing in him. We should not, because we face hardship, before, because we face challenges, these should not be barriers to God's plans for us. Rather, opportunities. We need to look at them as opportunities to discover that without God, life's problems won't have any lasting solution. So a lot of times what we find ourselves doing is we will try to fix certain things, and that's a natural instinct, to fix certain things because we're going through some uh, uh, tra challenges. Well, what the, what the Word is teaching us today is that as we try to fix certain things, we have to make sure we take God in everything because it is God who ultimately has the desire to give us complete solution, uh, uh, not just a Band-Aid approach, not just a, a, a quick fix, but something that's going to last and last a very long time um, because it is God's ultimate desire for us to be happy. Solomon is writing this at this time because Solomon, again, Solomon has been granted great wisdom. So we're looking at this from a context of this is, this is, this is deep, this is moving, this is, yes, I, I see this in my own life. And for this to be, have been written about many thousands of years ago, it still applies even today. But the part that we want to ask ourselves is, does God really want us to be happy? I want to make the case this morning that God truly does want us to be happy. My case today is that God wants us to be happy and that the way God wants us to achieve this happiness is through the pursuit of holiness. See, God wants us to ultimately be happy, but God has set out a plan for us called holiness for us to follow that pathway and not our own pathway. See, because when we follow our own pathway, we might find sometimes that we have some, some temporary 
uh, solutions to great, great problems. That's why I, I do find it funny, and I, I enjoy this text, I, and I have a lot of fun with this text. Um, I've used this text at home-going services before when I've come across the, uh, a, a person who has lived a very full, complete life, um, but their life story also shares in their story a lot of challenges and victories. So when you get a chance to learn about someone's life and you hear that they've had challenges, but they've had victories, and they give God all praise for the victory, and they give God praise even in the challenges because they saw how God was strengthening them even with that. But then I also like to use this text when I find someone, when, they, when the family share with me, or I know someone who's also lived a joyous life. They had fun. They, they played cards. They went on vacation. They did, you know, they, they just enjoyed life, just like you and I presumably enjoy life. They weren't just, you know, uh, uh, living so high and holy all the time that they never had a chance to kind of just be a, a real person. So we have a little fun with this because in verse 13 it says, well, in verse 13 it says that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil, in their work. This is the gift of God. So what, what Solomon is writing to us is saying, it's like, listen, you're going to work hard and there's going to be some reward for you. It's, it's okay, I'm sorry, this, it's okay for you to take some time to admire the work of your hands, the work that the Lord has allowed you to be able to produce. It's nothing greater than when you can be uh, surrounded by your loved ones, surrounded by your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren at the, in your later ages of life, if, if that's your call. Or to just be surrounded by those friends and family and relationships that you've spent a lifetime building and cultivating. Those are blessings. And we should all take some time to sit back and really enjoy them and really uh, uh, sit through them. But the question is, is it happiness or holiness? And I want to argue today that it's happiness through holiness. Here, here's a little short um, 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 definition. Happiness is an inner emotional quality as well as a state of mind. Whereby holiness is different. It means being set apart for God's glory and purpose and will. Um, uh, Matthew Henry, a long time ago, wrote as he was writing on Psalm 1, 1 through 3, he said, goodness and holiness are not the only way to happiness, but happiness, it's, but happiness itself. Meaning true happiness is true holiness. So as saints, as, as Christians, as, as followers of Christ, we need to understand that we can't have true happiness without holiness. We can't, we can't, uh, we've seen it before, haven't we? We've seen people, uh, maybe in our younger years, okay? Maybe in our younger years when we would go out clubbing and we would go out partying hard and we would stay up to four, three, four o'clock in the morning and then still somehow make our way to work over that Friday morning because we went out on Thursday night. We'd still be able to, you know, when we were young, we'd be able to make it and, and get through it. But as we got older, we learned we can't really go hard like that anymore. And we can't really participate in some of those things anymore because it just, it doesn't make us happy anymore. It, 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 it really makes us sick. It makes us hurt. It, it's not how God would have us to be because it's not how God has designed us to be. God would rather us be holy and work through holiness, uh, um, be in holiness to work towards true happiness. I want to lift up another scripture for you, and it comes out of Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, uh, 30, 25 to 34. So I want to pivot a little bit uh, from Ecclesiastes, where we learned from what Solomon is sharing with us, that there will be ebbs and flows in life, all the way through life. There will be ups, there will be downs, there will be heartache and pain, there will be joy and celebration. It will all come and go. It, it, it's just how you, uh, how you deal with it. But uh, ultimately what he says in the, in the last verse is that, verse 13, it says, this is a gift of God. The gift of God is that we be able to still find joy and happiness and have joyous seasons in the midst of all the work, in the midst of all the toil, in the midst of all the challenges, that at the end of it, there still will be joy. There will still be happiness laid up for you. So I, I, before I go to uh, um, Matthew 6, I want to just pause for a second and just bring back a, a question to you. Do you want to be happy? Have you ever had a conversation with someone who comes to you with their problems and they're just going off, blah, 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 they're just going off. I mean, they're just mile a minute. They just won't settle down. And then when you're finally able to get a breath in, you try to show them the, the silver lining. You try to show them 
the rainbow in the clouds. You try to show them that it's not as bad as you, it may feel right now and, and even try to offer them some suggestions how to get through it, but they keep knocking you down, they keep shutting you down, they keep, they're just really negative. We're, we're seeing this a lot right now as we're in the middle of our primary season and, and uh, ultimately the election come November. Here in, the, in, the, in this primary season and, and marching towards the election in November, you're hearing so many people saying neither one of these candidates or parties do anything for me. It's just negative on this side, negative on that side. And you try to talk to these people and, and all they see is negative, 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 and they're putting so much of that out there that they're not even taking the time to say, okay, yes, there's some bad over here, there's some not so good over here, but at some point, Who's going to do the most for you? Or better yet, is it easier for you to see who definitely is not on your side? And that's a whole other conversation, but the point I'm trying to make is we have times when we talk to people, they say they want to be happy, but all they do is fill their thoughts and their words and their energy into that which is keeping them from being happy. So therefore, they can't even smell the coffee. They can't even smell the flowers. They can't even taste a, a sweet orange or something. They can't appreciate even the smallest of things. But where we're going to move towards in this conversation tonight is the fact that God does want us to be happy through holiness. And, and through holiness means accepting certain things. And it means reaching out and running towards certain things. It means seeking the goodness in the midst of all the challenges. It means seeking how this is going to benefit me even once I go through and put in all this work. I mean, if you've ever done any home improvement projects, if you've done it yourself, okay, <laughs> and, and maybe you've decided, I'll just I'll start simple. You decided you were going to paint an accent wall. An accent wall is just one wall in the room that's a totally different color that's supposed to just draw your attention. And all you're going to do is paint this accent wall. And then you decide, you go into Home Depot, you, you maybe read a book or two, or you went online onto YouTube and saw a video. Okay, this is easy. I just got to put, I got to tape some things up, get the rollers, get the paint, put it on the wall, and I'm good. Cover up my furniture. But if you've never done it before, you, you, you realize as soon as you move the furniture, as soon as you take the pictures off the wall and you try to start taping, you're like, you find yourself kind of with some anxiety. Man, what have I got myself into? And then, and then for many of us, that wall stays incomplete for weeks, months, even years. We don't even get back to it. But that's what happens when we don't push through sometimes the work that we have before us. And we want to just show you how sometimes we have to actually go forward and get the things done in life. And so I, I, uh, as I was going and praying about this, the Lord took me to Matthew 6, 25, 34, to show you exactly what Jesus has to say about how we can find our way and get towards happiness through holiness. It's a little long, so I'll read it kind of fast, but it says, Matthew 6, 25 begins, Therefore I tell you, do not worry. How many times do we have to remind ourselves, don't worry about it? How many times do we have to share with somebody, don't worry about it? And I know when you're in the middle of it, you can't help but worry about it sometimes, but it's a discipline. It's a faith walk, and we have to not worry so that we can then hear from God and God can outline the plan for us. So many times God sends us the answer. God sends us the, the, the solution. God sends us the help. But because we're so busy scrambling and worrying and everything, we don't even see that. We don't even see that God put the people in our lives right here. All we have to do is make a phone call. All we have to do is call, call in that favor that was extended to us before, whatever it is. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about the body, what you will wear. It is, not, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Can any one of you be, by, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Here's the part I really like. And why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, we just talked about Solomon, in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Solomon was laid out, fabulous. Solomon was, was GQ down to the, I mean, just, you know, as a king, he was adorned in, in flowers and, 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 and just royal, royal garb. Um, 
and he stood as a symbol of just all things opulence, all things uh, uh, from, from that seat of power that he held. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? And here's, here's, here's the part, here's the, here's the sentence, here's the word. For the pagans, the unbelievers, for the unbelievers run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom of, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus is sharing with us through this text, even now, stop worrying about some of these trivial things. Stop worrying about things that are even really large and even big. Instead, put ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's, a, that's holiness. Seek God first. Seek holiness first. Seek the way of the Lord first. Because then it says, and all these things will be given to you as well. So maybe sometimes instead of our worry, we need to go into worship. Maybe sometimes instead of our crying or, 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 or um, um, sorrow, we just need to go into prayer. Or maybe we need to go into the word. Maybe we need to surround ourselves, put on a song that uplifts us. I pray for those of you, if you're watching Bible study, you don't have to be doing this right now. But if you're doing it, I pray that you have a song list. That there's a couple songs that you can either sing to yourself or play that will lift you up out of some things. That's a wonderful thing. That's, that's steering you towards righteousness. That's steering you towards the, uh, the kingdom of God that, that Jesus is speaking of right here. So while G God wants us to be uh, happy, there is a method of it. There's a method of the happiness. There's an a, a, a avenue, a vehicle, and that's called holiness. And in this text, you actually use the term righteousness. In other words, seek, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you as well. So that's, that's, a, 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 um, that's a cause and effect. If you do this, you will receive that. If you seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, you will be, receive all these things as well. So it's a promise that we can take to us. There, there was another uh, um, situation and it came out of John chapter 5 1 through 9 you may be familiar with this one John chapter 5 1 through 9 it's another example of of what can happen when you seek God first or when you get an encounter with Jesus and it says some sometime later Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep's gate a pool which in, in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been there for, had been invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured and picked up his mat and walked. This, this is telling of an account. The man had been trying it his own way for 38 years, but then he had an encounter with Jesus. He had an encounter with Jesus, and because of that encounter with Jesus, he had just enough faith to answer the question correctly. I mean, to answer the question and honestly, but not necessarily correctly, but he was honest with, with Jesus. He was honest and said, I've been trying to get well, but every, somebody is always beating me in because the belief was the first person in would be the one that would be healed. But at the end of the day, Jesus is saying, no, I've come to be able to bring you this new life. I've come to be able to heal you even in this situation, heal you in this. In other words, I know that you have been unhappy in your circumstance for 38 years, and I'm coming to bring you some joy. Uh, my, my righteousness, my holiness is coming to bring you some joy. And so here, and, and to, bring you, to bring you healing and to bring you new life. And so the simple question is, do you want to be well? So I asked the question, do you want to be happy? Do you want to be well? Do you want, to, do you want your, those problems to finally be fixed? Sometimes we find ourselves sitting in the same old mess because we have, this, we have uh, determined, we have convinced ourselves there's no other way. 
This is my plight in life. This is all that is left for me. This is where I'm going to die. This is how it's going to end. And that's not the case. I feel in my spirit right now that somebody, that Jesus is just asking somebody even right now in their space, do you want to be well? Do you want to be well from that infirmity? Do you believe that you can still be made well? And this is what Jesus was challenging this man with in this time. Another example is the familiar story you've heard, the woman with the issue of blood. She had gotten tired and tired of dealing with her infirmity, but she heard about Jesus, and she heard that Jesus was coming to town, and she ran to be where he would be. She sought after him. So here she did something in the physical and ran after him, and through faith reached out to hope to grab something of his. Uh, we, we don't know if she was trying to yank him back. We don't know, but all we know is that she was able to touch the hem of his garment, as it says. She was able to get a touch, and by that, the vert. Uh, Jesus felt virtue coming out of him, healing coming out of him, and the woman felt that her, her condition being uh, healed right in that moment. Sometimes we just need to go after Christ. We just need to go after Jesus. We need to do some things that, are un, uh, 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 that others aren't willing to do. We're need, we, we have to sometimes do some things in a radical way and just go and say, you know what, I'm going to go and get what I need to get. That's why I'm so glad that the church is back open after being closed for so long. And that's why I'm so glad that we still have the capacity to, to worship together on, online. That's why I'm so glad that so many tools are available to us where we can get a word, where we can get some encouragement, where we can look up something and, and, and try to find our circle. No, I know we can look up, you know, WebMD and try to uh, figure out how to, how, what kind of um, um, cures are available or treatments are available for uh, an, an ailment that we have. But what about the ailments for our heart, the ailments for our soul? What about the fact that, you know, we celebrate holidays and we have to go through certain moments of grief because that loved ones that come to our mind are not with us anymore? How do we get past that? How do we, how do we get out of that hopeless feeling and then get back to happiness again? How does that happen? It happens faster, it happens more clearly when we reach out to our faith. When we lean into that, which we've known has worked so many times before, has pulled us out. And yes, it, things like that, like grief or things like even illnesses, sometimes they go and they come. They come back and forth and, and, and it's like, like an ebb and a flow or, or, you know, just when we got out of one thing, we find ourselves in another thing. But that's the, the, what Solomon is talking about, that there will be challenges in life. There will be times in life where we have these difficulties and we have these challenges. And so all I wanted to share with you, I just want to make the case for happiness through holiness tonight. And the last point I want to make to you, it comes out of 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1, chapter, uh, verse 13 and through 16, reads this. 1 Peter 1, 13, 16. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober. Okay, now remember back in Ecclesiastes, it said, eat, drink, and be merry. So you see, we're still talking about being sober. Go ahead, eat, drink, and be merry. But keep in mind, First Peter is saying, but with a sober mind, okay? So don't, don't call pastor later and say that Taylor said it's okay for me. You know what I'm saying. All right. So, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Saints, some of y'all, most of y'all, many of y'all have been in this face wall for a long time, but yet we still keep running back to the same old vices that we know are harmful to us. It's time to recognize that some of those vices, some of those soothing mechanisms are not of God and is not what we need and is not going to put us on the trajectory of holiness to get us to happiness. Then I go on. Verse 15, here's, here, here's the um, highlighted version. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. It is written, be holy because I am holy. That's found back in Leviticus 14 uh, or Levitic, no, Le Leviticus 11, like 44, 45. Um, be holy because I am holy. The Lord is speaking to people saying, you have the capacity to be holy because I'm holy. And you need to reach, you need to move towards holiness. You need to live a life that is demonstrating your faith. You need to live a life that, show, that demonstrates that you have, in fact, put your hand in the master's hand. That you have, in fact, decided that you're going to live for God. That you're going to die for God. That you're going to be about your father's business. It's, it's a beautiful thing when you see people come to the altar every Sunday morning or any service where people 
where the invitation goes out and people respond. But the real blessing is when the teaching goes into those people and when they, and when they have to start living this walk that they, they said that they were going to live. And when you see their development and when, and when you see them grow in Christ, it's just like when, when they say in the church, come as you are. Uh, we, we talk about coming to the church as you are. We, don't, we say we don't worry about what you have on or how you smell or this, that, and the other. But over time, if we'll be honest, we don't want you to continue to come as you are because there should be a change in who you are over time. So now I came in this way and I'm, and I'm moving in this way because of the Lord, what, the, what God has done in my life and how God has changed me and God has elevated me. God has blessed me. God has put joy back into me. God has taken my, my few steps of uh, holiness and righteousness, my, my, my decision, my effort, and he has multiplied that. And he has given me the gifts that he said that he would give me when, when he said that seek ye first the kingdom of God and all this will be given unto you. He is true to his word. So church, tonight on this Bible study night, I pray that we understand that tonight we need to, to understand that we want to live in happiness through holiness. And so the answer to the question, do you want to be happy? I pray the answer is yes. I want to be happy. And if you want to be happy, do you understand that the way to true happiness is through God's holiness? And if you can understand that in order for me to be happy, I'm going to have to turn away some things. I'm going to have to turn my plate over in fasting at times. I'm going to have to uh, turn my finances over and stop spending on uh, fruitless, uh, not fruitless, yeah, fruitless, chivalrous, uh, um, um, mindless things. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to myself here. Am I... Amazon basket is full of stuff that I don't need, full of stuff that I don't need. Uh, but, but to really be holiness, I, and I have to be a good steward of what God has given me. I need to delete that stuff. I need to clear it out. Some of you need to clear some things out that is holding you back from, your ho from walking holy. Some of you need to clear some things out that, that you just have on the shelf. You just have it just in case you need it. Some things you just have just in case you might want to go back to it because you remember how you you believe that it, it might have gotten you through a tough time. But really, God is saying, no, come over here. I've got something better. I've got something that's going to last for a lifetime. I've got something that's not going to run out. I've got something that is everlasting to everlasting. I've got something that's going to bless you now and forevermore. And so why not try it my way? Why not move into ho uh, happiness through my holiness? Because when you come into happiness through my holiness... You won't hold a, a frown on your face for long. You won't hold a, a, a contention in your spirit for too long. You'll learn how to let go of, of people who have hurt you. You'll learn how to forgive, even though you never tell them that you forgave them, but you've already forgiven them so that you can move on to what God has you to be. you learn how to better manage your finances. So when, when the offering time comes and you, you, the tithe appeal goes out, you, don't, you, you can't tithe right now because you, you don't understand even how to work with your 90%. But if you ask God to show you how to even come into my finances, God will show you how to work that 90% to the point where you won't miss your 10% or beyond whatever God might be putting you in position to be able to be a blessing financially and give. Or, or, or opening up your heart, opening up your home, opening up whatever it is that God may be calling you to do, but you have various things that you're not able to, to do because you just don't see how it can work. But I just want to make the case for Jesus tonight. I wanted to make a case for Jesus tonight by if you follow Jesus, if you, if you learn about Jesus, if you walk in, G in the way of Jesus, you accept Jesus into your heart, then as Jesus was writing in, in Matthew, go find it, Matthew chapter 6, it's all read, that's all his words. He is promising you, he is promising you, if you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, walk with him, talk with him, turn your life over to him, then he will pour you out blessings. Then he will meet you right where you are. He will meet those needs right where you are. And, and, and understand, even when you go in the valleys, Jesus will be there. God will be there to pull you out of the valley. Even when you're on the mountain high, God will still be there celebrating the, uh, the, and rejoicing with you. Wherever you find yourself on the spectrum of valley high and mountain, uh, valley low and mountain high, wherever you find yourself all in between, if you walk with God, God will walk with you. And if you continue to talk with God, God will talk to you. If you seek God's direction, God will lay out the blueprint, lay out the path. And But not only that, God will send the resources. God will send the people. God will send that to you. It'll be so bright that you, couldn't, you can't help but walk in it. So my prayer to you on this evening is that your answer is yes. Yes, I want to be happy. 
Yes, I want to live right. Yes, I want to explore holiness. I want to try, I want to take one step into holiness right now, two steps into holiness tomorrow, and see where the path might lead me. Because I truly believe, and the word truly says that through, for, for us truly to be happy, we've got to walk holy. And the Bible may use the word righteous, uh, the Bible might use the word just at times, but it's all talking about the same thing. It's walking in the way of the Lord following his teachings, following his tenets, and believing in faith that that what we need will truly come to pass. If you heard something here tonight, can you just uh, put a hand clap in the chat, send up a couple hearts or whatever, it truly uh, would be a blessing. But also, if you heard anything tonight, and maybe I'm speaking to you, and you are, are someone who, well, first and foremost, maybe you've never uh, accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, or maybe you want to join this great church, or maybe you want to just rededicate your faith. Don't you know that you can do that by simply just going to our website at Ebenezer, dot, uh, ebenezerame.org um, slash connection hyphen card and then put in uh, a message to us, or just go to the website and look for a membership and, and, and find a way to send us a message. Just send us a message, say you want to come into fellowship. Say that you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Say that you want to uh, rededicate your faith. Someone will take that information and we will get back to you and then we'll give you a call and we'll welcome you into the body of Christ. We'll welcome you into the family of Ebenezer if this is a church that you wish to join. Um, we'll, we'll come and prayer with you and we'll just be able to put our arms around you and, and walk with you wherever you might be and try to bring you into where God would have you to be. It has been my absolute joy and honor and pleasure to be able to come and speak with you tonight. Um, I'm, I'm, again, I just want to thank my pastors for trusting me one more time to sit in this chair and to be able to share with you. And so, if, again, if you've heard anything, please, please, please come into fellowship with us by sending us a message online. And then finally, if you wish to sow into this ministry, this great church, Ebenezer Amy Church in, in Fort Washington, Maryland, is a great place for you to sow. This is fertile ground. So we do accept electronically. Uh, if you're a member and you want to send your tithes and offerings in at this time, you don't have to wait till Sunday morning. You can do it now if that's what you'd like to do. Or if you just want to have a seed, send a seed offering to just uh, uh, show a, a, a demonstration of faith through your seed offering that the, the ministry, the word went forward, and that you feel on your heart that you just want to sow into this ministry. Um, I'm not getting those. That not, that's not coming to me. That is going to the work of ministry of this church. So please, it's not about me, but if the Lord is putting on your heart to send something, to, to leave an offering tonight, won't you be obedient to what the Lord is saying? That is a, a, a faith, part of faith. That is a part of walking holy. Because if the Lord is, is urging you to do something, you should follow that. Again, uh, there are so many ways to give. You saw it on the screen. Please be obedient in your giving. And also, if there's anything that the Ebenezer Church family can do for you, uh, as you walk this Christian walk. That is why we're here. That is why the doors are open. That is why the, uh, we answer the phone calls. That is why we go out to where the people are. Whatever it is we can do, please don't hesitate to call us and, and, and allow us an opportunity to assist you as, as Christ would lead us to do just that. It's been my pleasure to be with you. I just want to pray a simple prayer of, of benediction, and I'll just say, may the Lord be with you until we meet again. God bless you, Ebenezer family, friends and virtual community. God bless you. Good night. It's women's season 2024, and what a season it has been. The women's season outdoor activity is this Saturday, May 18th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Kick back and have some fun with other sisters and enjoy activities such as line dancing, games and crafts, music, exercise activities, food trucks, and more. This event is free, but registration is requested. Go to EbenezerAME.org to register today. Invite us sister friend and treat yourself to an afternoon of some food fellowship and good old fun saturday may 18th prayer changes things join the daughters of anna prayer circle this saturday may 18th on the grounds of ebenezer for a powerful hour of prayer don't miss the retreat briefing on Tuesday, May 21st at 7 p.m. Come hear more about the exciting and new things planned for this year and learn more about the customized conference platform. Attend in person or stream live on EbenezerAME.org or Ebenezer AME Church's YouTube channel. 
sisters. It is almost here. Make sure to register for the 2024 Women's Spiritual Retreat and Restoration Conference, May 30th through June 1st, right here at Ebenezer. It's unlike you've ever experienced. The weekend features even more workshops this year with anointed facilitators, a young adult segment, two afternoon answers, three worship services, Maret Brown Clark as a special musical guest, and much more. Most of all, we will experience the wonder of God. In person is $149 or virtual is $119. Go to GodIsAWonder.com to register today. Let's celebrate God and all He is doing during this women's season, knowing always that God is a wonder. Brothers, come out this Thursday, May 16th, for a very special for men only with our own Pastor Joanne Browning. We'll start at 7 p.m. with food and fellowship, and then at 7.30 p.m., a powerful teaching and discussion with our co-pastor. All right here at Ebenezer, invite another brother as we come together to be strengthened and empowered as men of God.